It was back in May of uh, last year that John and Sandy invited Forbes up to the MIT uh, labs for our for the first blockchain uh, in action, uh, Confab. And they had us all in small groups and kept putting pressure on everyone. So what are you going to do to promote blockchain? What are you going to do to tell the stories? What are you going to do? And I said, Forbes is going to do what it does best, which is to inform and educate and tell those stories. So I'll, uh, I'll begin. I have a one slide presentation in keeping with the time, if they can put that up. As they're, as they're queuing it, <laughs> all right, and while, as they're queuing it, I'll go back to uh, what Forbes does best is tell the stories. And today in the audience, I've met a lot of people here who came up to me with really interesting companies, events, and uh, stories to tell and be told. The only caution I have for people is when John was saying that my colleague, Randall Lane, our chief content officer or editor-in-chief, can put you on the cover of Forbes. Keep in mind that you have to do something extraordinarily well and good or do something really badly and bad. So it's, it's up to you to determine which one you want to go for. <clears throat> so my story here is every fish uh, has a story to tell. And I'll, I'll begin actually before the fish story in 2012, we sent a reporter to see if they could potentially live on Bitcoin. Bitcoin was all the rage then, was just coming out. I think we bought 12 Bitcoin for a few hundred bucks. It was at the very beginning. Kashmir Hill, our journalist out there, tried to live on Bitcoin for just one week. Quickly found you couldn't live on Bitcoin. She was able to make one transaction using Bitcoin and it was with a local pizza shop. So she had pizza two or three nights in a row and called it quick. The big lesson we learned was six years later, five years later, Kashmir called us up. She no longer works for us, but is out there still doing great journalism and said, hey, keep in mind, you still have those 11 and three quarters Bitcoin that I bought back in 2012. And of course, we couldn't find them anywhere. They were just a key and an algorithm. I, I told my CFO, if you can track that down, we'll have a manager's meeting in Hawaii on Bitcoin, because it was trading at about 19, 20,000 right then at coin. So you learn these things as you go along. And we learned in 2012, Bitcoin was not quite ready for prime time in terms of currency to live on. So now, fast forward to 20. 18 and 19, and we're trying to tell those same stories around blockchain and AI. What are practical stories that people can understand how the blockchain is changing our lives? And so we decided to have a uh, gourmet meal that was sourced around the world using blockchains. And the first, our fish has every story, we were able to uh, contract using IBM blockchain and Ethereum and having a, a fishing fleet out of Indonesia tracked the tuna that you see here that was caught off the coast of Fiji and we could track it all along the uh, supply chain till it came to our table. So we knew exactly who had touched and handled and uh, prepared the fish to get to our table. It was eventually FedEx to us uh, from LA, I think. It made its way to LA, FedEx to the uh, Forbes offices, and, uh, and put in the freezer there, which <clears throat> had a lot of people very curious what we were doing with the fish in there. The second one was beef from Wyoming. And the same thing, we were able to track that cow from uh, birth until uh, it got to our table. So. In the end, what we learned, we couldn't put a complete meal together. It's a bit like the Bitcoin story. Blockchain is not ready for prime time and supplying a whole meal, but there's ecosystems working around the world. Uh, and Carrefour here in Europe was particularly ahead of the game in terms of they could not send us any food because of international uh, food transport laws, but they were able to send us a lot of packaging. So in addition to beef and fish, 
we were able to read labels on packaging. So with that, I just say, let's keep the stories going about blockchain and AI. We look forward to working with Sandy and MIT on uh, continuing that. And if you do have a great story, whether it's extraordinarily good or extraordinarily bad, talk to Randall in the back. So thank you. There we you. are.